It's a brand new save with the Scotland national team and the only thing we want to be singing at the end of this series is Yes sir, I can boogie, boogie woogie Pirlo takes deep towards the far post. Gordon Dresden and Italy have the win they need. Christian Panuti, who missed a chance a moment ago, breaks Scottish hearts. They will not be at the ball, but goodness me, they've given it a go. Oh, I don't think there's any contact there at all. I think the referee's bought this. I may be wrong. Oh, he's gone down so easy. It's Cadlitch. He's blasted it in. The Czechs bounce back again. And Harry Kane pulling away! Oh. England have equalised! Sons of Scotland! I'm dying in your beds many years from now. Would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here? and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! <laughs> Welcome back guys to Son of Scotland 90, it is a brand new series, it is a series with the Scotland national team, we have been appointed the new manager of Scotland, we will be succeeding Steve Clark. the guy was a hero, the guy was a national treasure, he got us to the first major competition in 22 years, but it is time to move on, it is time for Steve Clark to go, and it is time for Son of Scotland 90 to arrive. The announcement to announce us as the new manager was made by the Scottish FA headquarters this morning. In a statement to the press, the FA's chief executive commented that Sir Scotland was the unanimous choice of the FA's selection committee and was the only person for the jobs in their eyes. With a total lack of previous managerial experience, this could be the right role for Cool. Could be provide the perfect stage to showcase his skills and prove himself well guys that's what i intend to do this series i've spoken about it before i put a poll up about doing a new series this one got the majority of the votes so how we're going to do this is there's actually quite a few rules to this series first and foremost is when picking a scotland team when selecting a squad for scotland I have to use players, at least 50% players from the Scottish Premiership or Scottish Championship, whatever you want to call it, they have to be from the domestic league. So out of a 23-man squad, at least 50% has to be made up of Scottish-based players. Therefore, out of 23, that would be at least 12. The other 11 can be made up from players from any other league like the Premier League or you know maybe European leagues or if I want to use more players based in Scotland I am entitled to do that. Now this is going to be a 15 season save series that will end in either two ways guys. It will either end at the end of the 15 seasons after the 2036 World Cup or it will end when we win a World Cup. It could also end when we get fired, but I've got no room for negativity. I'm not going to mention that. It's either going to win when we win the World Cup or after the 15 seasons. Now, winning the World Cup is the ultimate goal. That is how we win the series. But I'll also be judging whether or not my role at Scotland, my spell at Scotland, will be successful or not. And by to do that, I've decided that I'm going to base it on a series of points and if I can achieve 50 points or more throughout this save this series then I will be a successful Scotland manager if not then I will be an absolute failure and to earn the points here's how you do it first category is qualification guys how we qualify for major tournaments 
World Cup qualification will earn us three points. A qualification for the European Championships will earn us two points. And winning the Nation League will win us one point. Doesn't matter whether it's A, B, C or D in the Nations League. If we finish top of our group, we win our group, we win one point. Whether it's A down to D, it's one point regardless. Next category, we have the World Cup. This is performance in the World Cup, so we're guaranteed three points for qualifying. Now, keep in mind, if we last 16 is three, quarterfinals is five, semifinals is 7.5, finals is 10. If we win it, the series is over. For example, if we get to the quarterfinals, we would only receive five points. You don't receive three points and then a further five points. It's wherever you get to. So once we get to the quarterfinals, the last 16 three points is no longer valid. So we get to the semi-finals, it would be 7.5. And similar to the Euros, again, guaranteed two points for qualifying. If we get out of the group stage and make it to the last 16, we're guaranteed two. If we get to make it to the quarterfinals, we're guaranteed three. If we make it to the semis, we're guaranteed five. If we can get to the final, we get 7.5. But if we can win the Euros, then we get ourselves an extra whopper of 10 points. So, uh, aye. 10 points, I'd love to get 10 points, but let's video guys, winning the Euros with Scotland ain't exactly going to be an easy task. Uh, then we have the FIFA rankings, we could only achieve these points once, so for example, if we drop into, if we get into the top 30, then drop out and get back in again, we don't get another point. So for the top rankings, in the FIFA rankings, it goes like this, get into the top 30, we get 1 point, get into the top 20, we get 3 points, get into the top 10, we get 5 points. So in total... If we can get into the top 10, then we will earn 9 points, which is great, but it's, it's going to be really hard. Our best ever ranking is 13, so top 10 is going to be difficult. Individual players can also earn us points. So if a Scottish player wins the Champions League, we get 1 point. If a Scottish player wins the Europa League or Europa Conference League, we get zero half a point. If they win the domestic league, but not including Scotland, because... Scotland's full of Scottish players, that would not be fair, uh, we get 0 0.5, they have to win a, a, a domestic lead league abroad, so it have, have, have to be like in England, France or Germany or some shit like that, yeah, it's 0 0.5 points for that, if we get into the FIFA or UEFA team of the year, it's 0 0.5 and some bonus points, if any Scottish team wins the Champions League, 5 points, any Scottish team wins the Europa League, 2 points, any Scottish team wins the Europa Conference League, we get 1 point, and if we can defeat England in a competitive game, friendlies don't count, has to be a competitive game, we will also earn a point, guys. So that is how we earn points on the road to 50. If we can get to 50, then I will judge our managerial career as Scotland manager as a success. Now that we've covered the basics, now that we've got all that boring crap over the way, let's get into some of the fun stuff. So you can see straight away, We've got some national team history. I don't even know. I didn't even know that was a thing. The uh, the Rose Cup. I'd never heard it. 1985. Apparently we won it. Uh, we also won the European Under 19 Championship in 1982. Unfortunately, the Kieran Cup does not seem to count as one of these major trophies. Unfortunately, you can see our current world ranking is 44th. Our highest ever is 13th, which we achieved in 2007, I believe, under Walter Smith at the time. It could have very well been Alex McLeish, but I'm going to go and say it was Walter Smith. And the lowest world ranking of 88th. I don't know when we achieved that, to be fair, but that is fucking horrendous. How were we ever that low? We should be nowhere near as low as 44, in my opinion. Never mind. I mean, double that. 88 is actually double that, so that is absolutely mental. Most capped player of all time, Kenny Dalglish, all-time top goal scorer, Dennis Law, and obviously we play at Hamden, built in 1903. We have 51,866 capacity. So according to the stats, this is our strongest 11. Now you can think of this what you want. I'm going to go and call this bullshit. I don't believe this is our strongest 11 at all. For starters, how's Ollie McBurney anywhere near this, this squad, never mind in the strongest 11? Doesn't make much sense. You've got Palmer in here, right back. I mean, where is the god, Stevie O'Donnell? Where is Nathan Parkinson? Why is this guy in here? Um, I mean, I, I agree with Craig Gordon and Nets, of course. Robertson at left back's not a bad shout. You've got McGinn in there, who, I mean, I, I agree with as well. But overall, do I think this is our best 11? Hell no. Will this be my 11 going forward? Hell no. But some hot prospects. 
the likes of Gilmore, Turnbull, Patterson, Taylor, McCrory, Ferguson, Hickey, Wright, Middleton, quite a few of them. And I am going to be trying to build around the youth. There's like guys that are approaching, you know, mid 30s. Realistically, how much more can they offer us? I am going to try and use the hot prospects as much as I can. I think the likes of Billy Gilmore, Turnbull, Patterson are players that are going to need to get played regularly. Also, Ferguson, Hickey. I know he's not on this list, but someone like a Ryan Porte, SV Hibbs. I feel it's someone else that I'm going to be trying to use as much as possible. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it there. We are going to skip the, the press conference because I don't have time to answer shitty questions. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to skip the press conference. First of all, we will save the game in case it breaks down or anything like that. It would be annoying. The Scottish FA indicate their expectations. Well, I've already gave my expectations. My expectations is to win the World Cup and to achieve at least 50 points over my course as Scotland manager. The minimum expectation is that the team attempt to be competitive in the World Cup qualifiers. The board are reserving judgment until you've taken charge of a few matches in this competition. So are we already underway? Yes, we are. And where are we? Let's see. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> Jesus. We're three games in already, and uh, we've won three games. Those games already, let's not get too excited. Those wins come against the Faroe Islands and Moldova, who you'd expect to beat. There's also a nice 2-0 win against Austria there at Hamden, but I mean, overall, um, nothing spectacular. We've done a job. can't believe we can see that goals against the Faroes, but you know what? We've got nine points for nine. We're in a good position. Denmark are only on four points. They actually drop points against the Faroes. That's mad. So yeah, Denmark in a bit of trouble. Um, yeah, so Denmark not looking good there. We have a five-point advantage already over the Danes. So it's good to see us in a decent position. So far, welcome to the Scotland setup. You you do possess international experience in your backroom staff with Chris Woods, Stephen Naismith, Scott Gemmo, Paul Gallagher, Keith Wright, and a bunch of other players having represented their countries. We have declined the press conference because that's what I'm all about, guys. I don't have time to answer shitty questions. We are currently in June 2021. Our next game will be against Denmark in Copenhagen, and that will be on the 1st of September. So we have got a decent amount of time between now and then. Three months, to be exact. That gives us a lot of time to get the squad preparation right. That gives me a lot of time to work on tactics and to work out who I want to be a part of that squad. So going to go ahead here and skip a few months, maybe arrange a friendly or two, and we'll be back, guys, with a massive game against Denmark. Okay, so here we go. This is the first real task, the first real job that we have of this brand new save. We need to pick a 23-man squad for the three games against Denmark, Israel and Moldova. But keep in mind, guys, we can only pick a maximum of 11 players from outside of Scotland. So we need at least 12 players that are playing their football in the Scottish leagues. So it's going to be pretty hard. Let's have a look then at the squad. Let's see who we can get. Well, first we need to get 12 players. We need 12 players from Scotland. So let's uh, let's look at it straight away. We've got Lewis Ferguson. That's one. <laughs> We've got Forrest McGregor Turnbull from Ultimate Celtic. That is four. Craig Gordon and Suter for Hearts, that takes us up to 6. Ryan Porteous for Hibernian, gives us 7. O'Donnell and Liam Kelly from Mullerwell, takes us on to 9. We have John McLaughlin and Parson, both from Rangers, that takes us on to 11. And we need one more. And at the moment we don't have it, so we're going to have to... We're going to have to find somebody. And who can we put in? Have we got Anthony Ralston, perhaps? Um, Ryan Fraser. We, he's not really... No, I forgot. Ralston's away to West Brom on loan. So, we can't even get Anthony Ralston. Maybe Kevin Nisbet. 
We'll stick Kevin this bit in. We'll put him into the national pool. How do you actually move them in? Doesn't make sense. Why is he not in the team? Why can we not promote him to the, the main team here? What's this? Request national report removed from national pool. Um, I want I want him in the, the A team, but it's not let me. Why is it not let me stick him in? It doesn't seem to make. Why is it not let me stick him into the A team? Um, let's see here. Transfer development national team. It's not let me put him in. What the heck's happening here? Remove from Scotland B team. What if we can remove him from the A? Can we call? It? I'm confused. <laughs> I am confused. Right, we're not, let's not let me put him in. Maybe we can't put add any more players in until we take some out. That could be the case because we already need to trim the squad actually. So uh, let's have a look then at who we will not be taking. So currently got three goalkeepers all playing in Scotland. That's good. I'm looking at the defenders now. We've got Cooper, Hanley, Hendry, Suter, McKenna. I think Stuart Finlay is the guy going to be dropping it here. Yeah, we're going to remove you, we'll move you to the B team, then, so I think that's okay, we've got enough centre backs, we'll move on to the right wing backs, we've got O'Donnell and Parson. that'll do us, we've got McTomney, uh, Palmer, I think can come out, of, I've no real need for Palmer, I'll move him to the B team for now, but I don't think Palmer's going to play a major role in this save, Robertson and Tierney have to be in, Kenny McLean, not convinced to be fair, could maybe take McLean out, but who else have we got? Billy Gilmore. I want him in. Um, I think I'm going to take Oliver Burke out. I think we'll take Burke out. We'll drop him to the B team. We've got Shea Adams, Lyndon Dykes. We're currently at, what, 23 players? I think we need to maybe take one more out and then we can put in Kevin Nisbet. But who are we going to take out? I think we'll all take out Kenny McLean. Will we take out McLean? Aye, we will. We're going to take out Kenny McLean, add another striker in, and that, that should be us, and that should be us with our first Scotland team. So, let me find him. Where is he? There he is, Kevin Nisbet. We should be able to add him to the team now, and we still can't. So, I don't know why. Why is it not letting me do this? I don't understand. Why is it not letting me... Oh, I need to remove one more. Right, we need one more player gone. It needs to be a non a player not based in Scotland. So it could be Cooper, it could be Hanley, could be Hendry, could be McKenna. I think it might actually drop McKenna. I think it's going to be McKenna. McKenna's going to be moving to the B team. And now finally, I should be able to add Kevin Nisbet into the A team. You can, so brilliant. There you go, boom. We'll go now and select our squad. I will just double check to make sure that we have 12 out of 23 players based in Scotland. So we've got Gordon, McLaughlin, Kelly, Suter, Portes, O'Donnell at 6, Patterson 7, McGregor, Forrest, Turnbull is 10, Ferguson 11, and then Kevin Nisbet makes it 12. So that's going to be our team, guys. That is the 23-man squad that we are picking. We will confirm it right now. And that will be the team that we take to Denmark and then host games with Israel and Moldova. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I picked right, hopefully I picked correctly. And uh, I'm hoping that that 23-man squad will get the job done when we need them the most. But uh, yeah, potential first caps is Ryan Porteous, Lewis Ferguson and Liam Kelly. McBurney's been dropped by Scotland. <laughs> Who's surprised? Honestly, not me. I did try and arrange a few friendlies, but unfortunately, there was just we wouldn't allow us to. Apparently, there was just no available uh, slots for friendlies, which kind of is disappointing. I didn't want my first game in charge to be against Denmark. I was hoping I could, you know, break in a few, a few easy wins with a couple of friendly games against lower-ranked opposition, but I didn't get that luxury. We have to go to Denmark, and that is how we'll be playing our first game. So, uh, yeah, not ideal, but we'll just have to accept it, guys, and we'll just have to, to move on. And we have a problem, guys. We cannot <laughs> go straight into the next game because um, Tierney is going to be out for four weeks. Our team is now down to 22. We have to pick a replacement. The only thing is the replacement doesn't have to be from Scotland. It can be anybody from anywhere. 
since we're replacing a player from outside of Scotland. I'm personally maybe thinking of Aaron Hickey, who's currently at Bologna. Uh, there is other options, like maybe Josh Doidge, but I think we're going to go with Hickey. And yeah, I think I'm going to put Hickey up into the, the big team. And maybe he'll get his opportunity. He's probably not going to start, guys, to be fair, in any of the games. I do expect it to be Robertson. But he, he might get a chance. So, yeah, obviously we know Tierney's out. Kind of sucks, but Tierney's out. Hickey's in. No more injury updates. Come on, guys. Let's get to this Denmark game without anybody snapping legs, please. And we are now moments away from our first game as Scotland manager. We're going to attend the press conference we're going to answer all the shit questions they have for us. You have announced your Scotland squad and surprised many by making six changes. I'm very confident. I wouldn't have picked them if I wasn't sure they were good enough. You've defied expectations in the world. Well, technically, I haven't really. Uh, <laughs> that was my first game, so I can't really take much credit for the previous matches. Are you planning to count on the suggestion that Denmark have you well scouted? Yeah, Denmark don't know shit, guys. Nobody is predicting Scotland to pull up any trees in the World Cup qualifying system how do you rate your chance to success i actually think we'll have a successful campaign boom there you go i put those put those press people in their place and then uh, now we need to go and put denmark in their place is denmark versus scotland denmark with the home advantage when you choose a scotland captain i personally don't think it should be robertson i'm kind of tempted to go grant hanley even though grant hanley is currently the face captain I might just put, I might just pick, I might just pick Hanley, if I'm being completely honest, guys. I might pick Hanley. If we move Andy Robertson, I think I'm going to make, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch it. I'm going to make Andy Robertson the face captain and Grant Hanley the captain. The only thing is, Andy Robertson's probably going to play every single game. I just, I don't know. Are you sure you want Andy? Okay, I'll know. Okay, I'll stick it for now. I'm going to be a shite bag. I'm going to be an absolute shite bag. I'm going to brick it. We'll keep, we'll, we'll keep Robertson as the captain for now and Grant Hanley can remain as the face captain. Hopefully if Robertson gets injured then I'll be able to make the change. I just don't want to make the change like hours before the game against Denmark. That might not go too, down well too well with, uh, with Robertson and with the team. But yeah, definitely overall I feel like I definitely feel like Robertson isn't really captain material. I think Grant Hanley would be a better option, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, who knows? Maybe John McGinn, Super John McGinn, could also be captain material. Dabala completing a move to Man City for 35.5 million. Shame Dabala's no Scottish. I wonder if he's got any Scottish blood or Scottish grandparents in him. Hopefully. We can only hope. But uh, it's all over now, guys. It's ready for the game. McLaughlin. Is expecting caution. Well, so am I. I mean, they're a good. <laughs> Denmark's a good team. I'm not going to go out and leave us well open at the back. Other games in this European qualifying section for the World Cup: we've got Austria against Israel and Moldova against Faroe. I'm actually sick of looking at Israel. 100% sick of Israel. So here's the team. I've decided that this will be the 11 going forward for this game at least. It's going to be Gordon, Cooper, Hanley, Suter, Robertson, O'Donnell. McGregor, McTomney, McGinn, Dykes and Adams up front. We're going with two up front guys. Hopefully it gets the job done. Let's find out. So we know what our team looks like, but let's have a look at the Danish team. Denmark then lining up with Schmeichel in nets, Daniel Waz, Christy Ensign, Simon Kadger, Mahiel, Hoiberg, Delaney, Skof, Olsen, Damsgaard, Breitwart and Poulsen up front. It's a good Denmark side. Definitely not their strongest, but it's a good side nonetheless. No Christian Eriksen, funnily enough, so not too sure why he's not in there. Is it anything to do with what happened at the Euros? Honestly, don't really know. Is it maybe he's not fit yet to play? Strange, but I thought maybe Eriksen would have been in there. People are talking about us potentially losing our lead in the table here. Don't let it happen. Uh, we, are, we are the underdogs here, but go on and give the fans a performance to cheer for. I'm going to go with that, I think. I think that that is probably sounds like typical Scotland to be honest, doesn't it? We're the underdogs, so yeah, guys, underdogs. Let's go and bite the arse of Denmark and try and get something here in this opening game. Replays off. Here we go. 
match speed during the highlights we need to up a wee bit and it's going to be Denmark going from left to right we will be going from right to left was then out to Skovolson Denmark playing in the red we are playing in the blue or our usual colours Breakweight it's Breakweight back to Delaney chance there for Dun eh, for about to say Dundee United chance there for Denmark didn't take it it's a good block Adams then heads it on towards Dykes and Dykes now plays it out to Stevie O'Donnell and that is the end of that highlight so not a lot happening in the first couple of minutes a draw here would put us on to 10 points it would see us remain top of the table but there's lots of minutes to go here hit ball head of the way Scove Olsen will collect it for Denmark he's going to try and get past Dykes well what then Cal McGregor this time heads it away only as far as Melly Melly in towards Breakway. He's, oh no it's a goal for Denmark but it might not count the referee is checking for offside here Scottish players are not happy I'm not happy goal disallowed thank god for that um, yeah it looked to be very close but I think he was just marginally offside and Craig Gordon plays it short then to Souter, Hanley, Andy Robertson now at his left hand side goes all the way back to Cooper Cooper launches the ball and Andy Robertson's through it's Andy Robertson the captain just puts it wide what a chance there we almost went 1-0 down VAR saved our ass and then Andy Robertson almost puts us a goal up there that would have been some comeback in the space of like a minute but unfortunately not happening still 0-0 done uh, it's the Denmark on the attack it's Damsgaard it's Hoijberg it's offside surely it's good save for Gordon it won't matter I think he may have been onside the referee has awarded a corner but it was a good save it was definitely a good save there from Craig Gordon ball whipped in and we can't save that it's Paulson the big man jumped higher than anybody else could jump and he has given Denmark a lead here in the 18th minute Yusuf Poulsen with the goal that moves Denmark up into second place and now it's worrying times here Delaney forces a good save after Craig Gordon Craig Gordon here having to be at his best Denmark applying pressure looking for a second goal to double their lead head of the way this time by Dykes Scove Olsen will chase it out to Was, and that is the end of that highlight but uh, yeah man not too good from us here 28 minutes in now Denmark have been the better team Suter now picking up a booking as well things are beginning to fall apart for us here Israel are 1-0 up against Austria they lead in Vienna but that doesn't really affect us too much what affects us is Denmark are playing pretty well they're passing the ball about it's, it's, it's Kaiser to Hoiberg to Damsgaard, though they're playing well, we can't really get a touch here, it's break weight oh he's took a shot and Craig Gordon with a great save, Robertson <laughs> plays it back to him tricky stuff there, Dykes had the option to maybe try and win the header there but decided not to jump and uh, at this stage I think I kind of just want to get into the break here we finally do get into half time guys, it's 1-0 Denmark I mean technically we're still in the game we could have went ahead with that Andy Robertson shot, unfortunately it was just past the post and now we need to try and get back into this game hands and hips look you know as well as I do the first half wasn't good enough show them what you're all about in the second hopefully that works as for the tactics we're on cautious I'm going to go balanced in the second half we're just going to try and make something happen John McGinn's on support we can't really move him from support so we'll leave it for that for now uh, we will get Stevie O'Donnell to attack as well as the other fullback and what we'll see what happens but yeah we have got subs to make I do intend to make subs we will be making subs but the longer we keep this game at 1-0 it gives us a chance McTominay they're sliding in with a challenge already on a yellow card has to be careful Paulson yeah as I was saying has to be careful do not want to go down to 10 men here McGinn with a block it's Hoiberg in towards Mahler in the edge of the box Delaney Denmark being patient looking for an opening we need to deny them that, we need to get the ball after them Melee, Damsgaard Delaney Kyer Damsgaard Melee again Whips it in It's Wasnu In towards Poulsen, it's another block, it's another block, it's another block and then finally it's Martin Breakway 
Ah, oh, man, we've got about 20 million blocks there. But we couldn't get the, the last block, and the last block is the one that's let us down. Denmark, now with a two-goal lead. Let's see if we can change this up a wee bit, guys. Let's encourage the team. We're going to go positive as we try and maybe get something to this game. I may actually look at making some subs. We have some players on yellow cards. Uh, Andy Robertson's looking like he's run his race. He's having a decent game though, so I don't want to take him off. McTominay's having a shocker. So I think we're going to bring on... I'll bring on Turnbull. Turnbull looks motivated. What can we play? We'll play turn. We'll play uh, Turnbull here. John McGinn's not had a great game. We'll bring on Billy Gilmore, and we'll switch Gilmore and Turnbull. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. And is that it? Is there any more subs we can make? Dykes has had a shocker. I think we'll bring on. We'll bring on Kevin Nisbet. I think you can only make three, but we'll do that. We'll make those three for now, and if we can make any more, we'll try it. But I'm pretty sure you're only allowed three substitutions, and we've made ours. Gilmore, Turnbull, and Nisbet coming on. Hopefully, something can happen here. Uh, let's show. We need to demand more. I think doesn't look like we're going to get it. It's two 0 Denmark as things stand. Mayhill out in the left now, looking to make it free. It's ball whipped in. It's Craig Gordon with a save. He, he grabs it into his clutches. To be fair, it was kind of right at him. It was a comfortable enough save for Craig Gordon. That ain't going to worry him too much. He punts it up, and there is now less than 90 seconds to go. And if we want that way back into this game, we'll probably run out of time. It's Paulson with the goal. It's offside, though. It will not count. Paulson did stray offside. The Scottish players are coming over, complaining to the referee. What? Goal awarded? He was offside? How the fuck did they awarded that, man? He was clearly offside there. Not that it'll matter. 2-0, 3-0. Regardless, it's a disappointing start to our managerial career. As Scotland manager, the players are down in the dumps. They're not happy. I'm not happy. But it was never going to be easy, guys. First game against Denmark. It wasn't going to be happy. Um, We're going to... Fresh arms, and I'm just going to say I'm far from pleased with that result. I'm not pleased at all, but at the same time, you know, we did lose to Denmark, who are solid. So I'm not surprised we lost, but I would have liked to have seen a bit more. If I'm being completely honest, guys, I think we could have did a wee bit better there. McKen accepts inevitable defeat. Oh, come on, McGinn. It's supposed to be one of our key players. And you're almost just accepting it as if it was going to happen, as if there's nothing we could do about it. That's poor. That is poor for John McGinn. I thought John McGinn would have reacted better than that. Uh, let's see then. Up next is Israel in two days' time. Will I be making drastic changes to the start of 11? You know what, guys? I might be. I might be. Based on what we've seen there against Denmark, there could be some changes coming in. Because I don't know if the, the start of 11 that started there against Denmark, I do not know if they deserve to play against Israel. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be crucial. To win that Israel match and get back to winning ways and remain top of this qualifying group. So this Israel game is arguably just as big, if not bigger, than the Denmark game. We're expected a uh, sellout for the Israel match, which I'm hoping so. We'll get all the Scots packed in to the stadium and we will take it for there. We are favourites, 65 with the bookmakers. We're expected to win. I'm hoping we can win. Ex Scotland star has demanded focus. Who is it? He hasn't. We don't know. We don't know who it is. So an ex Scotland star has demanded focus, but he's not given his name. Bit of a shake bag manoeuvre there. If you ask me, in my opinion, I mean, come on. If you're going to come out and criticise the team, at least, at least give your name away. Come on, guys. Come on. Anyway, that is going to do it, guys, for the first episode. Unfortunately, we lost to Denmark. It wasn't how I intended it to go, but I knew it was always going to be difficult. Now we can focus on Israel and Moldova, get maximum points here, get six points for these next two games. We'll still be top of the table. We'll still be in a great position, and we'll still have a real, real chance of qualifying for the World Cup. Anyway, guys, that is it. If there's any players that you can think of that you'd like to see me give a chance in this series and call up to the national team whether it be 
from a player based in Scotland or a player based abroad. Let me know and I'll do my best. I'll have a look at them and I'll see if they're worthy or not. Or even if you support a certain team in Scotland and you want me to give one of your players a chance, let me know and I'll see if I can do it. We'll maybe call them up for a friendly and take things for there. But that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment down below, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time. And by the end of this series, yes sir, we'll be boogieing. We'll be boogieing. Boogie all night long guys. Till next time. Peace.